As the year comes to an end and we prepare to get ready to go into the next, I like to take a step back and really look at my work. A year and a half ago, I, I don't think I was doing my best work. I wasn't asking my, myself the question yet, am I producing these images for engagement, for likes, or am I doing it for myself, for the art of it? And I just think once I became more intentional, I was able to make a big leap in the quality of my work. Um, you know, nowadays it is very important as an artist to use social media and to appeal to the crowds and the masses of the followers and to put out content uh, that you think is gonna do well and perform. I think that's the whole problem, that you're performing and you're producing stuff not for yourself, not that you are actually proud of, but you're producing for other people. If you're new to the channel, my name is Gabriel Press Silva and I'm a fashion and celebrity photographer based out of New York City. Here's some of my work. Times have changed a bit and it's good in some ways. It's easier to get your way out. It's easier to get your name out there in a sense. It's easier to, to get more information. There's not as much gatekeeping. There's, there's more ways to connect with other people in the industry, other peers. But at the same time, you know, it's led us all here where now, you know, artists, <laughs> I mean, hey, I speak for myself, but artists are known for being a little bit, you know, awkward and whatnot, yada, yada. And that's why we're good artists. So I saw this TikTok, there was a girl saying this, like, you know, I'm supposed to be just focusing on making music and here I am trying to do this, this weird little dance to, you know, promote my song. Do you know what is fucking embarrassing? Having to promote music as a musician? It's embarrassing. I'm so sorry. Having to like force your songs down people's throats. Most sick musicians were not built for this new era. Do you know what I mean? Most of my favorite musicians are awkward little weird. Do you think Tom York would have been on TikTok like, did I just make the song of the summer? No, because people who make beautiful music are weird and awkward. That's why they use music to speak through their feelings. Did I just make the song of the summer? Some ways that I've faced and dealt with this in my own career is, for example, I mean, even looking at YouTube videos. At the beginning when I was putting them out and I wasn't really sure what a photographer YouTube channel should be like, I kind of, you know, I assumed it was gonna be all, all just shooting videos and behind the scenes and I'm like, well, what else can I put out? So it would really delay my process of putting out videos or I'd have to kind of meet myself somewhere I don't want to meet myself and, and shoot stuff that I, you know, I didn't really want to shoot or maybe something subpar and I and I would, my, the, the quality would take a hit because I felt like I had to be shooting to putting, be putting out these videos. I would try to do BTS for every shoot because I was like, oh, I'm gonna turn this into video, I'm gonna turn this into video, but I kind of took a step back and I stopped and I'll only, start doing some behind the scenes recording that I'll have my assistant help me with. When when the shoot's already flowing and we're already in that momentum because I wanna make sure that my focus is always first the shoot and the work we're doing. That it's never the video first. You know, unless it's like specifically for a YouTube video like today, for example. But I did a little tech shoot that I haven't talked about. And that day I didn't get any clips at all just because the way it was flowing it kind of really needed all our attention power from, from the whole team on hands on deck that day, you know? And I decided it was best to, to skip clips. So we didn't get any video for that. And um, you know, before I would have kind of stressed out like, dang, you know, I'm not optimizing content opportunities, but now I don't care because again, it's always a photography and the quality of the photography is what comes first. I don't want to exert any extra brain, brain power that I'm that that I can exert into my shoot, into anything else, unless I'm absolutely sure that everything I need, all the brain power for that shoot, is not is, is being used for that, and I have a little left over. It's not easy, and I know it's a frustrating thing to think about as well. You can feel like I didn't go to art school, or I didn't you know start learning about this, or follow this career to become a, a social media connoisseur you know you may think i wanted to be a photographer i wanted to be a videographer i wanted to be 
of an artist. I wanted to be a painter. I, I didn't plan on having to expose myself or show myself to the world or, you know, or to be able to have a career. And those were all valid feelings. And they're feelings that we all have, you know? I talk about these things a lot with other photographers and, and feel out their sentiments. And I feel like the moments where I've felt the least motivated by my work, the least uh, determined, have, always, have been after periods where I was shooting stuff that I felt would get engagement, um, stuff that I felt would you know, get followers, get likes. At the end of the day, like even if it does blow up, it's not really gonna be beneficial because because it's not a style you like to shoot if it isn't your style. It's not the style you wanna be known for. It's not the style you typically shoot. It's not authentic to your usual work. It's not really something you're usually proud of. And even if it's like cool, like I said, it may not be your style. So it just like looks out of place. You can't really do much with it. But when you take the time and you give it the energy and you give the nurturing, to a project, to creating a special set of images, to creating a, a, a piece. Then you're talking more longevity. And then you're talking something that, you know, like fast fashion. They focus on something cool that will sell now in the moment, but it also means it'll get discarded uh, pretty fast. And it's always the next thing, the next thing, and it gets lost and forgotten about. Whereas somewhere like a heritage brand or something, a more brand that, um, uh, the opposite of fast fashion type of brand could make a, a timeless piece something that you know You could have worn in the 80s now in the future and it'll still be current and it'll still look good and the material will, will hold up and it'll be relevant and I think that's something that you know could be could be really applied to your work moving forward when you take a step back and you look at it with an honest lens like am I creating for myself Am I creating because I'm proud of this work? Am I creating to get better? Or am I just creating something that I think will work well for a TikTok to follow a trend? Be critical with yourself and really, really question what your intentions are here because the only way to really succeed in these types of careers is to be truly passionate about the work you're doing and the stuff you love to do. Obviously not every project is gonna be a passion project. And obviously you need to be doing money, money making projects to continue your craft. And I'm not saying, you know, growing a following is a bad thing, it's a, it's a great thing, it'll help you in your business, but but you need to make sure that what is bringing them is actually what you're doing, what you wanna do, the style you wanna do, the work you wanna put out. Because when you finally get to the point where you say, whatever, I don't care, I wanna put my work over that, over the engagement, over the likes, then you're gonna lose all the followers again because that's not what they followed you for initially. I think the best thing probably would be finding a, some form of middle ground. You know, maybe you don't post as much, but when you do post, it's just like exquisite. It's like your finest work, I'm like amazing. Maybe you challenge yourself, let me post at least once a week versus every day or every other day, but it's like you're just pulling things out of your buttocks, you know what I mean? And we've been there, dude. I know we've all been there as artists, you know, in this day and age, like, feeling like, dang, like there's nothing I wanna post, there's nothing I, I'm proud of right now that I've done, or I'm just like reposting something I've already done, but I have to post something. Like feeling the urgency and the need to have to post something or you're like, getting left behind or getting left in you know the dust of irrelevancy. When was the last time Frank Ocean dropped an album? Like seven years ago, dude? Like <laughs> you can't make a masterpiece, you know, six times a week. You know, it's, it's not difficult to take a good photo or paint a nice frame. Um, it's not even that crazy to, to do some, to take a great photo or take paint a great frame, you know, or write a great paper. But, you know, you start entering a different level when we're talking about, you know, capturing an excellent, you know, noteworthy, outstanding, um, image or painting or writing that paper that 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 I don't know book anything of that that doesn't happen overnight and you know or and much less a masterpiece like always let me know your thoughts in the comments and like yo and before I even go into my you know my closing out thank you guys for supporting me this year on this on my YouTube 
is the year where I really started posting more consistently. I'm staying in tonight for New Year's to do this video because I don't let myself go past 14 days without posting one. And I've really been more motivated to do that because of you guys and to learn other things, I'll be able to present them to you guys. We're constantly learning here, over here as well. But thank you again for a wonderful year and I'm looking forward to even a more amazing year. But have a lovely day, you guys. Happy New Year's. Goodbye.